Okay, we ready? Here we go. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. John 4, verse 23. We're going to do it again. Here we go. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. John 4, verse 23. Now we have worship. I, I have asked the Lord about this uh, numerous times. And then when uh, Bethany was sharing after she uh, led us in worship um, about losing our... Um, um, and you know what? I probably probably don't even have it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, so um, I had a dream, and I needed to, uh, I, I always write my dreams down, as you know, and um, this was in um, 2013, but I was in New York City with Bethany and Andrea Langham, I had gotten separated from them. I was at um, some place that looked like a driver's license place with a big desk and lots of chairs. And um, I had put my purse down on the seat and I'd gone up to uh, the window or up to the big desk. And then I came back and there was an empty wallet next to my purse. And then I realized that my purse was also empty as well. Um, so... Um, I met up with Bethany and Andrea, and we're walking through a lot of people um, with my big, empty red purse. Uh, I, it, it just stood out to me. I'm walking around with the idea that I have everything that I need. That was just one of the things that I, I had everything that I needed. But uh, suddenly there was, <laughs> there were, we were on a, one bicycle. And uh, <laughs> so we're traveling all together, but the road ended, and we looked ahead, and people were tearing up the road ahead of us. And so we were going to be on a dirt road, so it's going to be a rough road that we were going on. And then um, um, I thought I should call someone. Um, uh, I thought I should call one, but uh, someone, but I realized my phone was also gone because that was in my purse. And I, I realized that now I have to somehow notify the credit card company and the driver's license. There were credit cards in there and all kinds of things. Um, but I hadn't realized that my phone is now gone. Um, I'd gone back into the room and, uh, that we were originally in, and I went to the big desk and talked to the woman about what had happened, and she just smiled at me. And that was it, you know, because everything's okay, apparently. So, but back to the phone, I realized I had lost connection without, with others without my phone. I knew no one's number to contact them. I'd lost everything that was important to me. Everything that was important to me was in my purse. Everything that was important to me was in my purse. And, uh, and now I realized I had lost communication. I woke up and immediately said to myself, oh, thank God, that was just a dream. And then I said, oh, Lord, if only what we read in the news last night about our children being forced into being in bathrooms with whatever gender from the age of kindergarten, any child could go into either locker room or showers, depending on what gender they felt they, they were at at the time. I said aloud, Lord, if only that were just a dream. As of this time, we have lost everything that we have held dear to ourselves. The attack is on our children and on our grandchildren. Have we lost communication with the most important person in our lives, Jesus? Have we suddenly realized, like I did in my dream when the phone was gone, that I have lost communication and I don't know the right numbers? I don't know who to call or who to write to. 
God, help us to keep our eyes on you and trust in you and do whatever you tell us to do, to contact whoever you tell us to contact, to speak to whoever you tell us to speak to, to wake up all you dreamers, stand up all believers, take up your cross, carry our cross, regain communication with the living God. Have we entered with no turning back the book of Judges? Are all of us doing what's right in our own eyes? I'm afraid so, and now the consequences of living that way has come. The time has come to pay the price for living that way. That was in 2013. And I'm not quite sure why the Lord had us had me share that, but it, it's, a, it's a serious thing that we're looking at in our country as well as around the world today. And we are in the last of the last days, and we need to pay attention to what's going on around us. God calls us to something more than to just sit back and watch it happen because, oh, Jesus is coming back. Okay, we're, we're all going to be fine because Jesus is coming back. No because God has called us to something more. He's called us to stand up all believers and to uh, uh, take up our cross and do what he's called us to do. So whatever God calls you to do, please do it and do it with all your might, okay? And so, Lord Jesus, as we just come before you, Father, and we enter into this study, we ask, Lord God, that you would just go before us Lord, that you would minister to us today, that you would um, speak your words, Lord. And uh, just, um, I pray that you would put me back together this morning, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, for your word to be spoken, to you be, for you to be glorified, to, for you to be lifted up, Lord, that you're, the word that's spoken are only your words. Father, I pray for a fresh anointing, not only on me, but on all of us that are in here, Lord, that we might know your presence with us. And I have no idea why I'm crying. I just know, God, that you are here. Your presence is here, and you have words for us. You've already spoken to us in our worship and in, our, in, in this dream, and, and, and you're going to continue to speak to us. So we thank you, Lord, for it. In Jesus' name, amen. What I'm looking for is, um, this is my box, <laughs> so um, I always keep them in my, in my Bible, and uh, so I'm, while I'm praying, I'm, and yes, Lord, okay, well, uh, and there it is, I, I just saw it, anyway, anyway. So, we've already gone through, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it, no matter what dreams we have. This is still the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will be glad in it. In Jeremiah 29, 13, it says, And you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all of your heart. When we talked about Nicodemus last week, I was reminded that Nicodemus was a man who, uh, who sought the Lord because he, that verse goes with him very well. And you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Nicodemus was not content to have a portion of the truth. He wanted the, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So he asked questions. I picture him looking at Jesus in the eyes and seeing Jesus' facial expression as Jesus talked to him. I see him really intently listening and really paying attention. And God has called us to that. He has called us to seek him so that we can find him and search for him with all of our heart. In looking, um, he wanted to know the truth. So today as we go in our study, we find another person who is not willing to just go with the flow. And, uh, you know, as we look into chapter uh, four of the book of John, um, and just going through this study this morning, and I thank you guys for the way that you always pray for me. I just want to say that. <laughs> um, 
the Samaritan woman didn't back down, and she asked Jesus all the right questions. She wanted to know, how do I worship? How do I worship? Where do I go? I perceive that you're a prophet. So where am I to worship? Her heart was a worshipful heart. In John 3.16, and that led, uh, led her to following Jesus and sharing him with the whole town. So in John 3.16, the three things that it had told us, it says that in John 3.16, the initiative in all salvation lies with the Lord, with God. The initiative in all salvation lies with God. We talked about that last week. I don't think we covered it well. I don't think I put a lot of time into it. It's God who calls us to himself by way of the Holy Spirit. He woos us in. He calls us in. Come unto me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Come unto me. Come to me. He initiates that salvation in our lives. And the mainspring of God's being is love. God is love. That's who he is. That's what he is. God is love. And who does he love? He loves the whole world. The whole world. There is not a person alive that God does not love. Those who hate him, those who are trying to destroy everything that has to do with him, he loves them because God is love. And so God, for God so loved the world that he gave he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. Believe, trust in, rely on, cling to, adhere to. That's who Jesus is. This world is not our home. He, he did, we're just passing through, passing through, passing through, passing through, the judge, but he came to sacrifice for my sin and for yours. And so in verses 1 through 30, it tells us a story of an unnamed, anonymous, broken woman who was just trying to make it through life. An unnamed, broken, anonymous woman who was just trying to make it through life. Her story, she had faith. She told Jesus what she knew. Her story is only recorded here in John. She was alone at the well drawing water in the heat of the day. She was an outcast. She'd been married five times, and six, number six wasn't even her husband. It was someone else's. But she was about to have an appointment with a Ph.D. that day. Because number seven is the number of completion. She will find her completeness in Christ. He's the PhD. Today she has an appointment with Jesus, PhD, pure, holy, divine. And that's why Jesus needed to go through Samaria. He needed to go through Samaria. Later on, he's going to need to go to Cana. He needs, to, he never goes anywhere without purpose. Everything that God does is with purpose. Everything in our lives is with purpose. The woman found like us that there was a big hole in her heart that only Jesus could fill. Only God can meet the deepest need of the human heart through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Only he can do that. Only he can do that. Those questions that you're asking, and again, I don't know why I'm saying, I, there, you're, you're asking some questions, and I'm telling you that Jesus is the one that's going to fill that hole in your heart. He's the only one that can do it. He's the only one that can fill that. Only God can meet the deepest need of the human heart through a relationship with Jesus Christ. My mom was married six times before she died at the, at the age of 36. And I often wondered, why? Why was she married that many times? Why was the Samaritan woman with five men? What happened that each one left or she left them? What, what happened there? What happened with my mom? 
because someone else came along and gave her a story and told her she would be loved. She would be accepted unconditionally. That's what the Samaritan woman wanted. Isn't that what we all want? To be loved unconditionally? And she thought that was in men. She thought that was in being married. She thought that was in some other situation. They found that a husband doesn't complete me. Only Jesus can do that. Single people are complete in Jesus. And married people are complete in Jesus. My husband does not complete me, and I do not complete him. I, I hear people say that, you know, they complete me until they annoy me. You know, I just... <laughs> Only Jesus can complete me. Only Jesus can do that. And I, when I put my notes together, I am jumping all over this chapter. So that's why I'm, I, I just want to let you know ahead of time. In verse 26, Jesus tells the woman, I who speak to you am he. I just, I love that as well. Let's imagine for a moment. What do you think he looked like when he was saying this to her? Do you think he had a smile on his face? Do you think he was serious? Do you think he was? No. Did, did he whisper her secret, his secret? I'm the Messiah. <laughs> what do you think of that? Yeah. No, I don't think he did it that way. Yeah. And right away, were her eyes wide with amazement? Did she stutter as she went, you, you are, you, you're the Messiah. You're the one I've been looking for. She was a Samaritan. What she worshipped was half of Hebrew and half of Assyrian. They spoke Arabic. Samaritans spoke Arabic until they went in the synagogue and then they spoke Hebrew. Very interesting. They put the two countries together, and as they merged and they became Samaritans, before the time that Assyria took over and married in, there weren't any people that were Samaritans until the children were born that were part Assyrian and part um, Jewish. And so those two coming together became Samaria. And so they were Samaritans from that time. Um, I can't remember the number, and I didn't, the, the year. Um, yeah, doesn't matter, because this is way too much information to try to fit in here. But um, because they merged like that, they also merged the religions. So they had a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So they worshipped on Mount Gerizim. Where are we supposed to worship that she's going to want to know? Um, uh, so, right away, when she hears this, right away, the insignificance of her life was swallowed up by the significance of the moment. Our insignificance is swallowed up in the significance of the moment that we realize that Jesus is my Lord. I've accepted him as mine God is here. God has come. God cares for me. And that's why she talked to the first person that she ran into and announced, just met, I just met a man. He knows everything about me, but he still loves me. I can tell he still loves me. He knows everything about me. This is not normal excitement. He loves me. He's what I've been looking for. He is the Messiah. And she led many people to him. Because of her excitement, Jesus had taken a life that was drifting and gave it direction, anchored it down. In verse 11, I told you I was jumping all around. She tells Jesus that the well is very deep, much deeper than she realized 
Think for a moment of the depths of our human nature and our human life. Think of the depths of the wells in us. Do you, do I, do we limit the work of God in our lives because we think the well is too deep? Do we have a deep well of hurt, a deep well of trouble in our heart? Jesus says to us in John 14, 1, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I've gone to prepare a place for you. I've got it. I've got you. And he's the one person that we can believe when he says, I've got you. Oh, I've got your six. Yeah, I got your back. People will tell us. And then when trouble comes, oh, wait, what? They're not back there. Jesus said, I will be your six. I will be all around you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And that's what she was coming. Would you answer, but Lord, the well is too deep and even you can't draw up peace and comfort out of it. I see this as a problem and I know, God, there is nothing you can do about it. It is never going to be healed. It's never going to be taken care of. It's never going to happen. It's just too deep. You'd be right. Jesus doesn't bring anything up from the wells of human nature. He brings them down from above. He brings those blessings down from above. We forget that he is almighty. We're the ones who are poor, not him. So many times we struggle to reach the bottom of our own well, trying to get waters for ourselves. And the well of our incompleteness runs deep. But we are complete in him. Totally complete in him. In verse 7, Jesus asked for a drink. So many times we're looking for Jesus to quench our thirst. And yet here we find him asking her to quench his. So often we get so busy doing for God. So busy about everything that we have no time to sit at his feet. And quench his thirst. No time to be there before him and love him. Why? Because it's easier to serve than it is to pour out our lives before him, to be on our face before him, to be silent before him, to allow him to be in charge. You know that that's what quiet time is about, right? It's about letting God be in charge. We all thought it was about our Bible study. (laughs) It's about letting God be in charge, letting him speak to me, letting him speak into my life. He is asking for the women to quit, women to quench. She is so often, we get so busy. But the goal of the call of God is his satisfaction, not simply that we should do something for him. We're not sent to do battle for God, but to be used by God for his battles because we say the battle belongs to the Lord. And so we join him in that battle for souls as well as for other things that are going on in our life. Do we have doubts that God is able if we only give it all to him? I would challenge you to commit your doubts to the Lord and ask for faith to live by, for Christ. Commit your doubts to the Lord and ask for faith to live for Christ. Have confidence in Jesus, the living word. He will refresh your faith. We move on, and, and I want you to notice a couple of things that he needed to go to, to, um, to Samaria. We already covered, but in verse Um, 15, she said, I don't want to have to come here anymore. I I, I just don't want to have to come here anymore. Is that what you're telling me? I won't have to come here anymore. 
And he goes on and he tells her that he's the Messiah. And in verse 28, it says, she left her water pot. She left her water pot that had been there at noon in the heat of the day. She left her old life behind her. Then he speaks to the disciples, and the the thing I want to point out is that he sent all of the disciples to the grocery store. (laughs) Because I think it took all of them to figure out what they needed. I'm not sure. But... Um, and he tells them that they get to join in that laboring. And then the, the Samaritans all believed, not because, and many more believed because of his own words, because of God's own words. And notice that in verse 42, they said to the woman, let me make it clear, it's not because you told us anything. We heard it ourselves. The, he, he spoke to us, not just through you. Just want you to know. I think she was just excited about that. You know, that they had come. And now moving into verse 43 through 54, we again see Jesus responding to the faith of one man. This was a noble man. He was an important man who heard or had seen something about Jesus, that Jesus can do these things. He had faith. But I want you to notice also that he did not have a name either. He's also nameless. It doesn't matter what what place he was in life. He still remains uh, nameless. Note that he was coming not as a worshiper, but because he needed a miracle. He came with faith, not as a worshiper, but in need of a miracle. Some need to be, and, and um, note that he was coming from the area that was known for his unbelief, this, uh, for its unbelief, not his unbelief. He was coming to it from an area that Jesus was going to that was known to stand against him. He wasn't able to do many miracles there because of their unbelief. Um, we visit a place in Israel, and uh, of course the name escapes me, but it's one of the places that said if these things were done, the things that were done in Chorazim, Chorazim um, and, and I can't remember the rest of what I was saying. I can't remember the rest of that verse. But they didn't believe God. They didn't believe Jesus. They didn't believe in what was going on. Um, he's... So it was a a barren place. Chorazim is a barren place. So, um, but he came from that place. Some need to be broken before they will follow Jesus. I don't know about you, but I had to come to a place of brokenness where I recognized my brokenness. And you know what? I'm still broken. One of my friends was having a conversation with her husband. And... uh, He'd, she'd been sharing some things with him and um, speaking of the need for counseling and stuff. And, and um, so she went to the counseling. And something came up in their conversation. And he said, her husband said to her, I'm not speaking of me unless, if you're trying to read into this, I'm not speaking of myself. He said to her, they're they're having another argument. And he said, I thought you got fixed. No, you didn't. I will reach out and touch you, boy. Yes. (laughs) She did not say that. She said, no, I'm still broken. Aren't we all? Still broken. This was a broken man. His son was near dying. He knew, he believed, he had faith that Jesus was there, that his son would be healed. He knew it. He believed it. Just like Mary and Martha. Jesus, if only you had been here, my my brother wouldn't have died. They had faith for that. 
Here he has faith. If, if only you can go there, I know that my son will be healed. This was a rich man turned to a beggar because of his situation. A rich man turned to a beggar. This unnamed man had faith that Jesus could heal his son if he was in Cana. Jesus knew that this man had the faith and, and that, that his son would be raised. But Jesus sees beyond the tears and the words of this man and looks directly at his heart. A heart filled with a quiet knowing that Jesus would heal his son. This man believed that Jesus would heal his son. Was it his belief that healed his son? No, it was Jesus who healed his son. And we see that happening. And the very time that Jesus had spoken the words, his son was healed. When, when he spoke those words of um, that um, in verse 50, Jesus said to him, go your way, your son lives. And so the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he obeyed, and he went on his way. And while he was on his way, his servants came to him, and he said, don't bother him anymore because your son's, your son's okay. Well, what time did that happen? Have you ever prayed for somebody You've been at home and you've been, they come to your mind. I hope you do this. They come to your mind and you pray for them right away. And you don't know what you're praying. Sometimes some words will come to your mind and you'll go, oh, I don't know why I'm praying this, but okay, God, this is, this is what I'm praying for. And, and, and it, it comes to pass. And so he asks, uh, the, so you ask them, well, what, what time did that happen? Well, that's right when I was praying for you. And that's exactly what this nobleman said. It was the very time that Jesus spoke those words that my son was healed. And so because of that, because of that, so the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and he went his way and Jesus tells the man, go your way, your son is going to live by faith. These people in our text today are unnamed with purpose. They're from every walk of life. From the outcast to the one that everybody looked up to. All of them. All of them needed Jesus. God wants us to know that our name can be placed in these stories. And like I said, I'm still a broken woman. I still have broken areas in my life. You might think I have it all together, although it's pretty obvious when I stand up here that I don't. But I want to assume that somebody thinks I got it all together. I really don't. I really don't. I really need Jesus in every area of my life. And so do you in every area of your life. We can learn to walk by faith. And just like both of these people, we will share it with all the people we can. Every chance we can. God has made something beautiful out of my life. I am a broken person. And he's putting me, I want to say, back together. But I'm not back together. Because in the broken places, he's poured pure gold. And those veins of brokenness now shine with that gold. He's made something beautiful out of my life. So many days I think, oh, God. oh how can you deal with this woman? Speaking of myself. <laughs> God, how can you deal with this? Oh, I, I I'm a failure. I, I have failed you. I've, oh, I, I'm, you know how you talk. I don't know. Probably the rest of you don't <laughs> do that. But um, he made something beautiful out of my life. And he makes something beautiful out of your life. And he makes something beautiful out of every life that's holy and completely given to him. The woman told the whole town. 
and the whole town went out to find out if what she said was true, and they found it to be true. The man relayed the whole to his whole relayed the situation to his whole household. That means all of his servants, all of his children, his wife, anybody else that was considered family. He shared it with everyone. How do we not share Jesus with people? How do we not share what God's done in our lives because we're in a place that, and it, they all believed. Our faith can spark the faith of others to give themselves wholly over to Christ. We are living in the last of the last days. And I feel myself bouncing. <laughs> the last of the last days. We're almost there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And so, Father, I thank you. I thank you, God, that you have gone before us today. I thank you for everything that happened this morning. I thank you, God, for your presence with us. Thank you that you're changing us from glory to glory. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord, that you took this mess of a woman who stands here and you're making something beautiful out of my life that brings glory to yours. Use me as much as you can, Lord. Use us all as much as you can. We confess to you that we, we fall short. And your word says if instant confession, instant forgiveness. And so, Lord, we confess to you those things that you've pointed out to us, Lord. David said, search me and know me and try my heart and see if there be any wicked way within me and lead me in the way everlasting. And that's the prayer of my heart, Lord, that you would lead us in the way everlasting. We thank you, Lord, for the Samaritan woman. We thank you for this noble man. We thank you, Lord, that it was written down in a book so that we can read it and be reminded of your goodness and your grace and your love and your sacrifice for us. Use us as much as you can. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this Heart to Heart Women's Bible Study recorded at Refuge Calvary Chapel in Huntington Beach. We hope you've been encouraged by today's lesson and will join us again as we continue to study through the Word of God. For more information about the Heart to Heart Women's Ministry, please visit our website at www.refugefamily.com or call our office at 714-891-9495. Your name.